All right, so I've had a lot of people ask me how I do my ribs, so I thought I'd do a quick little video here just to kind of show everybody what my process is and how I make my ribs. I did a lot of like YouTube searching and watching videos and things like that and reading forums and trying to pick up little hints and tips and stuff here and there and I made my own little uh, my own little way that I do it and it works really well for me. I've never had any complaints on the ribs. They always turn out nice and juicy and uh, very tender, fall off the bone. So I figured I'd put together a little video real quick just to kind of show you guys what I do. So when I start off, uh, take the ribs and the first thing I put on them is uh, a liquid base. And you can use anything like mustard or um, mustard's a good one, uh, like Dijon or um, uh, like a spicy mustard or something like that. Something that's nice and uh, hearty. Uh, I use this uh, Dirty Trees sauce uh, that comes from our barbecue joint up the street, uh, Four Trees Smokehouse, uh, as my base. And really what that does is it just, it gives you a, uh, something for the, for the rub to kind of stick to, and it also helps with the, with the flavor and whatnot. And if it has like a, a vinegar or something in it, uh, sometimes it can kind of help break down the tissue and the meat to, to help soften it up. Um, then I just put a rub on. Uh, my rub of choice, what I normally use is this Three Little Pigs stuff here. I pick it up from uh, Academy Sports. I think sometimes Walmart has it, um, but this stuff is amazing. It's always great. Uh, another good one or an alternate is the uh, Bad Byron's Butt Rub. You can get a huge, huge bottle of this stuff and it goes a long way. That's what I ended up using today because I had more of this than I did of this and I've got four slabs of ribs on the uh, grill right now. So I started the grill up this morning and the first thing I do is I put a charcoal base down and I get uh, get the charcoal going in the uh, little chimney here and once it gets going really good I'll throw that bed down and throw like two or three logs on um, you know, stack of logs back here is just live oak um, from down in Palatka just uh, just small sticks and whatnot um, I throw about uh, two or three of these on when I first get it going and I open the baffles all the way up so it can uh, it can get burning really really good which is kind of what I'm doing right now. Once I get it burning really good, uh, I keep the keep the lid closed. I get the grill up to 300 degrees or so, just to get a good get a good heat in there. Um, and in the bottom up here, I've got three buckets in there, smaller buckets, kind of like the little bucket down here, and they're filled with water. And what that does is it kind of helps pump up the moisture level in there, and it helps keep your uh, your meat from drying out. Um, so once that gets up to about 300 degrees, then I start closing the baffles off and, and uh, I'll open up the, the hood just to kind of let, let some of that hot air out and bring the temperature down. I like to slowly creep it back down to around 225, 250 top. So then I go on the grill for about, uh, I, the method I do is called a 321 method. And uh, basically what that is, is you, you cook it for, cook for three hours, smoke it for three hours, and then you take them off and you wrap them for two hours in tin foil, and then you pull them back off, unwrap them, and smoke them for another hour. So about six hours in total. And the reason for that is like right now they've been on for three hours. You can see it's it's laying pretty flat. Even though it looks cooked, it's got a good look to it. Um, that's far from done. And the reason the meat is so tough still is because what happens is when you when you start cooking this meat, the fat inside of the meat will start breaking down. And when it breaks down, it's just like uh, it's like on a hot day when you sweat. Uh, that, that fat turns to a liquid and it starts to cool the meat off internally and that's when you hit 
what's called a stall. And it's usually around uh, 150, 160, sometimes upwards of 170, 180 degrees uh, internal meat temperature. And so by wrapping it like this, nice and tight, you, uh, you help break down that um, that fat in there and it will push it through the stall. Um, this is also called the Texas crutch method, I think. Uh, but it works for, it works for any kind of, uh, any kind of meat you're smoking, uh, beef or pork. When you wrap these, you want to make sure that you wrap them nice and tight. You don't want too many, uh, too many pockets. And if you rip the tin foil, you want to make sure that you take another piece. Golly, it's hot out here. Take another piece and kind of wrap it up. The goal is just to get it nice and wrapped up tight, airtight. Throw it back on the grill. Periodically throughout the cooking process, you want to um, just keep an eye on your grill. If you've got a good grill that is, um, you know, solid construction, this is uh, three or quarter inch thick steel. And uh, first thing I did was go around all the seals with some, I think it's called lava, lava felt or something like that. I don't know, um, but it's sealer. Uh, it's like a, a felt sealer for. Uh, used for grills and stuff. They use them on those the, the big green egg things. To, you'll see them when they have a little seal on there. Um, so depending on what kind of grill you've got, you can maybe use those. I bought I bought mine on Amazon. I got like a big 50 foot long roll. So whenever it goes bad, I just strip the old stuff off and replace it. The reason you want to use something that's got like good three quarter inch thick steel is because it holds temperature really well. So, I got some good coals burning over here now. I'm going to toss one more stick on just to make sure it stays good. I've got the baffle on the intake side about a quarter of the way open. And the outlet side I have just a little bit further than halfway closed. And... Uh, that usually keeps my my temperature right around 225, 250. So those uh, those ribs will stay on there now for about another two hours, and um, pull those off and put them back on for another hour, and they should be done. And you'll know when they're done because you'll reach in there to grab a bone or something, and the bone will just pull right out the meat will be nice and tender and juicy and that's the whole point of you know doing that wrap method is to keep it uh, is to help push it through that stall break down those fats internally and allow that meat to continue to cook without letting the fat the rendered fat kind of slow down that cooking process you want your temperature to get up to about 200 degrees internally so yeah, first thing once I get once I get the meat on first thing in the morning, I set I set myself a timer on my phone for about 20 or 30 minutes, uh, and then I go off and do yard work or go do some woodworking or something. And um, when I come back after the timer's gone off, check the temperature, um, and then periodically throughout the day, I'd say every hour, two hours or so, you're gonna want to check your buckets that you have in there with water in them. And if the water's starting to get low, just fill them back up. Uh, that helps keep the humidity level up inside your grill so that it uh, helps prevent the meat from drying out. But that's about it. So smoke for three hours, wrap for two hours, unwrap and smoke for one more hour. Um, cover your meat in a sauce, uh, like, a, like a mustard-based sauce or something like that. 
put then put your rub on before you put your meat on. Um, keep an eye on your temperatures. Check it every 30 minutes or so. Make sure you're sitting around 225, 250. Um, if you have a thicker construction grill like this, it's going to hold temperature a lot better. If you have uh, like a thinner material, uh, like usually like the ones you find at like Home Depot or Lowe's, um, the bigger name brands and stuff like that, those ones will not hold temperature very well. I had a char griller that the temperature was all over the place. It would, it would spike up to like 300 and then when you try to close it off, it would drop back down to like 150. It would just kind of go back and forth. So um, that's why I kind of wanted to upgrade to something that's a little bit more thick. Uh, thick construction and honestly that's been the the best thing that I've ever done as far as buying anything with a grill this thing holds temperature like you wouldn't believe um, and it's solid it, that thing's gonna last for a long long time oh when you pull the meat back off uh, when it's done you're gonna want to let the meat rest for about 15 minutes 20 minutes uh, before you start cutting it uh, if you cut it too soon, it's just going to shred on you. And when you do cut it, you want to make sure that you use a very, very sharp knife because that meat is going to be very, very tender. And if you're using a dull knife and you're trying to cut through it, you're just going to start ripping it to shred. You're going to have pulled pork, not ribs. <laughs> so make sure you use a very, very sharp knife. Give the meat a little bit of time to cool off before you start cutting into it. And um, I don't know enjoy it with your favorite sauce or whatever you like most of the time when we make ours we don't even put sauce on them uh, because the they're so juicy and the rub uh, complements the meat so well we just eat them dry uh, but they're not really dry um, they're, they're tender and juicy and you really just don't even need any any sauce when you kind of get the method down and you learn your grill and how it works um, your ribs are going to be so tender and juicy, you're not going to... It's It would be blasphemy to put sauce on them. So, but that's about it. I Like I said, I think I pretty much covered everything. Uh, if there's anything that I didn't, if you got any questions, just uh, give me a comment down below. And I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that I can. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Go Gators!